So Evan says, I want to know how to tackle line array passive boxes. Example, say I have an Electro Voice X array three-way top. I load the manufacturer settings into the DX38 DSP and fire up my amps. Is my first step to put a reference mic one meter away and line up all my driver's components in an acoustically controlled environment or shop, or do I take it out in the field and measure the drivers from front of house? I've tried doing the field approach and with several boxes aside, it's hard to get a consistent reading. So, pretty easy answer here, Evan. I think you answered your own question already because you've tried this, it didn't work. You've got one other option that you know you should try and it sounds like you just haven't tried it yet. So, I can confirm your suspicions. Yes, you should be doing this in a controlled environment. Um, basically, you want to be measuring the direct field free of reflections when you're doing these kinds of settings. Um, so let me see if I can show you a demo real quick. Well, first of all, let me draw your attention to this article from Pat Brown. I'll put that as a comment below this video. Um, I definitely recommend you take a look at this article. He says, um, the first step to the sound system equalization process is the application of the signal. This requires an anechoic measurement um, and your case right here to, re to assure the required signal processing is in place and set properly. Okay, so I would read through that, um, but I'll just show you a quick demo in MapXT. So let's say that this is a speaker that you want to measure and this would be its response in an anechoic chamber. There's no walls. So there's our measurement with, uh, in an anechoic chamber with no walls. And then if I were to check the worst case scenario and turn all these walls on and uh, have them all set to rigid and then do that measurement again, then all of a sudden it looks like a lot more messy, right? And that's because we've got a lot going on here. Um, we've got um, our first arrival here, and then we've got another arrival here, and another arrival here. And uh, that's probably because we've got this direct sound here, but then we also have uh, something that's happening with the floor bounce here, and then maybe something bouncing off this wall back here. Um, and then there's other reflections too that just aren't being seen in the measurement as much like that. Uh, and then another one from this back wall that then has got <laughs> over here. So you see things get pretty busy. And on top of that, this is just uh, a two-dimensional prediction. So in your measurements that you're doing in your room, you also have uh, all the other walls that we have in a three-dimensional world. So we, if we don't have an anechoic chamber, we can still measure these speakers in the field as Pratt Brown describes by doing a ground plane measurement or getting them up in the air. Basically, we want to remove the reflections. So you can do this though in your shop or outside your shop um, if it's uh, you know a nice day and not too windy with something like this. So I'm going to zoom in down here and I have my microphone upside down so I can just show you that it's still there and the microphone head itself is just really close to the ground and then I've got my speaker really close to the ground as well. Okay, so here's our ground microphone and there we go. So instead of that um, messy measurement that we saw previously. Now this measurement at the ground plane, even with the wall still on, looks a lot more like the anechoic measurement that we saw earlier. Um, just be really careful that you do keep this microphone uh, really close to the ground. In fact, the tip should almost be touching the ground. I've had some problems in the past where I'm trying to do this and I put the microphone on the ground but then it tips up a little bit because of the shape of the microphone or whatever other reason. And you actually need to use something oftentimes to tip the microphone down a little bit so that the capsule is actually touching the ground or very, very close to it. 
And I can demonstrate that to you by moving this a little bit. And you can see uh, I've immediately got a comb filter here. And I didn't even move it that much, right? But just because of that little movement, now I have this. Oops. I have this direct sound. And now I also have a reflection. And that's what's causing that comb filter. Okay, but if we put this back down here, right on the ground where it was before, we get that stuff cleared up. Okay. All right, so to answer your question, um, yes, you should be doing it in the shop. Hopefully your shop is, has a, oops. Hopefully your shop has a really big space that you can use where you can get away from any walls. Um, if that's not possible, then going outside, if that's not possible, then maybe you can find like a gymnasium or something like that. But take a look at that article by uh, Pat Brown and let me know what questions come up for you about that.